this is Peter Hessler, and I have a profile in this week's magazine about Rajiv Goyal, who was a young development worker and sort of activist. Rajiv was, was sent to eastern Nepal in the Peace Corps. He was a Peace Corps volunteer there from uh, 2001 to 2003, and he, he was sent as, a, as an English teacher in a middle school in a small village called Namje, which, which had roughly 500 or 600 residents. He noticed that in his village, there was a real problem with not having water, and, and that the, the villagers had a good water source, but it was about two hours away on foot on, on very steep mountain paths, and people spent just hours every day hauling water. And so he started to research, and he figured out how to design and construct a, a water pump system. And, and, and it's a pretty complicated thing to do. It takes a two-stage pump. To, you know, you're talking about moving large volumes of water, about 1,300 vertical feet. He relied heavily on local technicians and, and, and on his own skills. He'd done some pre-med physics courses in college. The water is pumped from the river and it comes through um, a three-inch galvanized iron aluminum pipeline. This footage is, is from a recent trip to this village of, of Namje and, and he's looking at the, you know, at the pump system that's that's still operating there and, 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 and talking with the technicians. I mean, one thing that Rajiv would certainly emphasize is that when he goes back, he does not need to do this. I mean, the reason that this is an interesting project is that it is very, very functional and continues to function whether or not he's there. I accompanied him in September, and, and many villagers said, well, this is Rajiv's 15th trip um, back since he lived with us in the Peace Corps. And, you know, people there kept count. This, this meant a lot to them, you know, the fact that this is somebody... Who, who, who came back again and again to the same place. And, and they recognize that it's a different model than what development workers often do. You often have this view of development work of the American or the European going to a place and teaching them how to do something. In Rajiv's case, it depended on, on dealing very closely with community members and, and the fact that he spoke the language very well and relied heavily on locals for advice and, and for expertise. This is really what made this work. Whenever you see, you probably see Rajiv on his phone, which is which is sort of the constant Rajiv pose, and it's the same thing whether he's in Nepal or in Washington D.C. Rajiv is, you know, sort of an anomalous figure. He's a young guy. He's he's of Indian descent. His parents are immigrants. But, you know, he's he's a little guy, about five and a half feet tall, and he is really just incredibly persistent and tireless. He's always on his phone when I was with him in Washington, D.C. He was constantly, you know, sending emails on, on his iPhone and, and calling all kinds of people ranging from I mean, when I was with him, he was calling Jimmy Carter's grandson and the, the daughter of, of Patrick Moynihan and all kinds of people.